Welcome, I'm Darren, and I'll be your guide today as I rank the 20th century U.S. Olympic cards. I guess that's the best way to describe it. There are nine cards, well, there are ten card sets that happened basically between 1983 and 1996 all around the Olympics and really built around the U.S., you know, made in the U.S., that they're all standard cards they're released in a wide range of, of fashion. So there are some released in packs, some in complete set form, and some are just promotional sets. But all of these card sets kind of fit together as Olympics cards. And so I'm gonna be ranking all 10 of them, only I'm gonna be ranking nine of them because there are two sets that are basically the same set. And the array of designs is actually pretty impressive. So starting off, at number nine, this is classic, the world-class athlete set. And this card set is problematic because what classic wanted to do was they wanted to make it all about the images. And so they used a black border, which is kind of like a cheat code. It almost makes the, the card seem like a full bleed image. Not quite, but it has kind of that effect to it. And it, that can work really well. Unfortunately, they decided to make one side of the border a little bit bigger than the other side of the border, which allowed them enough room to put world-class athletes, the text, onto the card. And if it's a horizontal image, that does work because it's everything's balanced. But when it's a vertical card, it's not balanced and it doesn't work anymore. So that is not a successful decision. But the bigger issue is that when you do a card like this where you get rid of all the design, the image has to read. And it most certainly does not in this card set. This is such a random array of images. It's not that the images are a, a random array, it's that this is a card set I never even knew was about the Olympics. Because almost nobody's using Olympic uniform, or almost nobody's wearing Olympic uniforms. See, Olympic cards are, are released before the Olympics, and when you're looking at current Olympians, well, they're not yet Olympians, so they're in, all, they're in whatever uniforms they wore when they were trying out for the Olympics, which means they're not using uniform uniforms. So every single athlete looks different. There's no continuity to them. And in a case like that, you need a card design to carry through and to pull them all along to unify the whole set. And they don't have that, which means this card set looks like just a random grab bag of athletes. And at least in the case of the Sports Illustrated Kids cards, they had a clear design. Here they don't. So this card looks cheap. And heaven forbid that you turn the card over. I don't even want to get into that. So this is a card that is super underwhelming yeah, it it seems like a cheap card, and look, it's classic, so of course it was a cheap card. At number eight, I go with another card that seems cheap because it's the 1983 Greatest Olympians cards. And this is the card set that also has the M&M set that's basically the same design. The M&M set is a red border, this is a yellow border. Now, when I look at this card, I look at it and I go, Okay, so it's an old Topps card. And in many ways it is, except it's not actually a Topps card proper. It doesn't have the Topps text on it. And I would need that to be on there to feel kind of right. Otherwise, it feels like a cheap knockoff of Topps. I mean, they even have a design that looks like Topps probably would have made it. And at that, it's a lousy Topps design anyway. But the card isn't a Topps card, and so it just feels... it feel, Tops was already making cheap cards as it was. This feels like a cheap version of a cheap card. Not, not good. And the yellow border doesn't help, but then the M&M's cards have a red border and that definitely doesn't help. This is a card that, is, that only worked at a certain period of time and it felt like somebody didn't put much effort into it. And that's what we got today. So, you know, Olympics cards have to start somewhere and, and for US releases, this is where it started, so you know, there's that. But then there's a pretty big jump from the, the bottom two up to number seven. And at number seven, I have a card that I was surprised slid all the way down to here, which is the 1992 Impel Olympic Cards. And the Olympic Cards is, this is a card set that I've never, 
I, I've never felt it, it feels like a second-rate card kind of like I've been talking about especially with classic the issue that the card has is it has a big white border and it's a very big white border and it means that the image inside feels small. It's actually not much smaller than most of the images that we see here on this list, but it seems small because there's so much white real estate. And it's not just that it's white real estate, it's that it's unadorned white real estate, which means it feels like wasted space. And because of that, the image feels like a little postage stamp. It feels a lot smaller. So it's, the border is distracting. And then I take the time to, you know, I, I look at it and I go, okay, well, what did they put in the border? And as I look at it, I go, oh, that's actually well-crafted. This is a well-crafted card. It's not just not a well-designed card. And that's the problem is this is a card that should either the card should grab your attention or the image should. The image seems small and the card seems bland. So you have to invest in appreciating this card. That's the problem that it has. It is a nice card, it's just, it's an underwhelming card, which is why it's here at seven. At number six, I have a card that surprised me that was this high up the list, which is the 1996 Collecta Cards. And I'm not gonna tell you the whole name of this set because that doesn't matter. This is a set that is the mess of all messes. It is such an array of stuff. There's no continuity to it. Even with the Olympians themselves, the actual athletes are just kind of spread out in the set. And a lot of the images are lackluster, but a lot of the images are really, really good. And interestingly, the border is both good and bad because it has something interesting. It has the gold foil on it, which is cool. It also is a border that's designed to get out of the way. You know, what I said about the big white border, this does the opposite. It has a lot of really impressive images, and so they want the border to kind of disappear, and that's what the brown color does. It it makes the image or it makes the border seem like it's not there. Only it also at the same time enunciates that something is there. It's almost like it's invisible, but it's kind of interfering. So the border does not work to unify a card set that really could use some unification but it also does a good job of allowing those impressive images to at, at least not be overpowered. So the card, I wanted this card to be lower down the list, but at the end of the day, I went, well, it actually does have some nice qualities that even the Olympic cards doesn't quite have. I think it's a little bit more successful, but it's really about the image and the images so often do work well with this border, which is why I go, all right, begrudgingly, I'm putting it at number six. But now we get to move on to the top five, and the first two that we're looking at is pretty interesting for this list. And number five, I've got Kodak. And the Kodak card, this is the card that stands out. If there's any card here that makes a statement, it's the Kodak card. And the image is kind of an understated part of the card. It's almost like it's not even there. And that's the nature of this card because this is an advertisement for Kodak and it succeeds. It's got yellow and black, very clear, very obvious. It's got the whole film strip theme, very clear. Even the Kodak name is pretty strong on the card. So it's an advertisement for Kodak, mission accomplished. It also has a brilliant theme, which is that each one of these cards is around an Olympics. Specifically, the part one particular athlete that stood out at each Olympics event of all the 22 Olympics. Really cool idea. I love that. The image, though, it's just, it's a really small image that doesn't really carry. you you got to stop and go, well, what's going on with this card? In fact, the card back is better than the image on the card front. So, it is, for as far as the design goes, this is about as clear and strong of a design as you're going to find, and I like that. It's got to be about an image, and this is a card that's about a card. Not about an image, it's about a card. So that's why I have it here at number five. At number four, I go to another advertisement, which is 3M. And with 3M, this is a card that, it's almost not even a card. I mean, to be fair, it's the only card that's made of card stock. The 3M cardstock here is a very interesting fibrous cardboard stock that it doesn't feel like a card. It doesn't print like a card either. 
all of the colors on this card are very washed out so it it feels feels underdeveloped but when you do it actually does one thing really good which is grab your eye and pull you in it's got a lot of things going on the image doesn't really uh, draw your eye because the way that it prints on this card surface is not strong when I was processing the images for these videos, I had to be really careful because I really wanted to increase the contrast and make it clear, but I had to give you an understanding of what these cards look like. I want them to be stronger. They're not. But the interest on this card is really cool. The red band, the you know, all the text, all the things that are in it gets you engaged and pulls you in. So that is what this card does successfully. And to me, that is a stronger quality than any of the cards that we've looked at. But now we got to move into the top three, and we're moving into a, an interesting situation where Jesse Owens, the image for Jesse Owens is the same on all three cards. So just before I go into the number one card, I'm going to show you all three cards next to each other so that you can see just how borders affect one image, because this is a pretty rare opportunity. The first of these three is the 1996 Upper Deck Olympic cards. And these are, well, they're just borderless cards. A little bit of gold foil on them, which is cool, I like that. But when you do a borderless card, the images have to work. And with some of these, like with swimming, the images are incredible. And in some cases, like in basketball, they're not. They're absolutely not. This is a card set that lives and dies by its images. And I've already kind of mentioned about that in the past, especially with classic. But in this case, the, the glossiness and the gold foil are enhancements. They make these cards work a lot better. And because there are a number of images that do have the strength of really reading well, and even with the, the what is it called, Future Champions, the subset in this, those also read really well. That's why these are all the way up at number three, because when it's successful, it's successful. But again, when it's not successful, it does hold back. There's no card to save it. And so that's why I have it all the way down here at number three. It's, it has me kind of torn because I want to, I want to give the designs that I've already looked at more of a nod, but the, the fact is the upper deck did the right things to make this work well enough in enough cases that I've got it in number three. Number two was, it really caught me off guard. This is the 1991 Impel Olympic Hall of Fame cards. These cards, I've never been a big fan of these cards. And that's because, well, actually, some of what I don't like about the card is actually things that I do like about the card. It's, it's a mess of a situation. First off, the cards are almost entirely old images, which has always caught me off guard because I've expected to see more of a variety of really strong names carrying through on these cards, and it's kind of haphazard. So it felt like kind of like an afterthought set. A big part of that is because you have the, the gray border, and then you have the stripes, the red, white, and blue stripes that are like a fabric. And I don't like the fabric on it. If they had done it as just straight stripes and treated it as a normal straightforward card, it would have been better. But because the stripes are on there, there's a texture to it, a visual texture that I don't like. But all of the information up at the top and the bottom is so intricate and so it's really nice. I like the way that it all comes across. So when I look at the card, it actually does all the things that I need for it to look good, to look really good. It is a card that needs to have good images, and a lot of these images are good. But when the images are not good, the border at least is still strong. It doesn't carry the card. It doesn't save the card, but it maintains the card. But when it is strong, I gotta, I, I really have to give it a, the, the nod that going into this, I did not see this as number two. But when I laid all the cards out, this was number two, whether I liked it or not. But number one was an easy one. And that was Snickers. And you can see here from all three cards of Jesse Owens just how the card border affects an image. And I love the fact that I can use these three cards with this image to show you just how much it changes. The Jesse Owens card almost works well with the upper deck. It's, 
it would be better if it was bigger. That's what the upper deck card needs to be. It needs to be bigger. You can see with the, with the gray border how it is really well balanced with the black and white image. Interestingly, with the Snickers card, they have the gold or bronze border, and, but they do have sepia tone for the image, which works to integrate them in a really fascinating way. It would be cool to, to see what it would be like with a, a black and white image, so you'd have the difference with the border. But with it all integrated, it creates such a fascinating spirit to this card. But what makes the card work is the red, white, and blue text and images at the top and the bottom, which just make these cards really vibrant and strong. And it's not a big card set, but the cards pack so much punch. These are the cards I look at and I go, wow, those are awesome. That's the way that I look at the cards. So they are very clearly for me, the top of the order. And that's the way that I rank all nine or all nine or 10 of these designs. Now, if you, if you have a different take on the order that these would, uh, that these go in, you know, definitely let me know down in the comments below. Also, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I do urge you to do so. And uh, I guess that's about it. So thank you very much for watching.